What animal killed this bird? Was it a hawk, a coyote, a bobcat, or an owl? In this video, I'll show you how to interpret the remains of a bird kill site. And at the end of the video, I will show you how to ID the bird feather to identify the prey. The first thing we're going to look for is any damage to the quills. The bulk of the bird is no longer here. We're just left with the feathers. So all of these feathers were somehow removed from the bird and the manner in which they were removed often leaves a mark on the quill. We're specifically going to be looking at the tip of this quill here and we've got two major options. Option number one, the quill is intact as it is here, which means that the feather was somehow plucked out of the bird, either with a beak or with some claws. Option number two is that the quill is cut or sheared and that would mean that an animal has chomped it with the back uh, of its teeth. All of these quills are intact. You can see that all of them are fully intact, which means that all of these feathers were plucked. You all can picture um, a bird leaning down here, grabbing with its beak and just yanking the feathers out one or two at a time. Mm. I don't see it on any of these feathers, but if you look closely, you can often see little bite marks from the beak. It can show up as these little creases on the edge of the quill where it was grabbed by the beak and yanked out. So that's something to look for. Here's a shot from the other week of feathers that I found that were sheared. I believe these were sheared by a weasel. Um, and you can tell it's the weasel's sharp teeth that are cutting those feathers. You can picture uh, a weasel or a dog with a big bone in its mouth and really sticking it in there and the back of its jaw and really yanking and crunching on those teeth. Because these feathers are not cut or sheared, I'm leaning towards a hawk as the predator at this point. Mm -hmm. But cats are also known to pluck feathers with their claws. So we're gonna continue to look at other features of this kill site to help us aid in our identification. So this feather pile is almost in the shape or size of a basketball hoop. I could fit my arms almost around all of the feathers. And this ring here is classic of a hawk when it will um, pluck out feathers from a bird. When a coyote catches a bird like this, the feathers tend to be spread out in more of a mess. And maybe a couple groups here and a group over there. You can picture a dog sort of gnawing at it and then shaking it over here and dragging it with its paw and yanking off some more feathers versus this pile is more uh, neat and centered and collected. I'm also noticing a lot of these feathers that are stuck into the ground with the tips pointed down, almost as if they have fallen here from the sky. And when a raptor, like a hawk, catches a bird, sometimes they will land on the ground to pluck it, and sometimes they will land up in a tree, pluck the feathers from the tree, and then they will drift all the way to the ground, resulting in the pile here. So something else that we can look for is turn our eyes upward to see if there are any feathers that are actually caught in the branches above us. And if we do find those, we can certainly rule out for good the cats and dogs because they would not pluck the animal from up in the tree. Finding feathers stuck in a tree branch up high like this is an excellent indicator that some sort of raptor caught its prey, flew it up to a tree, and then plucked all the feathers as these were caught um, falling down. The last thing to consider is the actual location in which you found the bird kill site. What is the micro habitat like? Is there enough space for a hawk or an owl to be swooping through? Is there enough space for a coyote or a bobcat to be trotting along? Or is it uh, deep uh, in a thicket where one of those animals wouldn't get to? In order to narrow down your possible species list, it's really important to have a general knowledge of what kind of animals are in your area. Do red-tailed hawks live near you? Are there great horned owls? Are there bobcats? If you're not sure, ask your neighbors, ask local hikers or hunters, and you can also use the website inaturalist.org to see what other people have observed. For the last part of the video, I will show you how to identify the feather. Which bird did this come from? And feather identification can be incredibly challenging. The best advice I can give is to just pick up any feather you find, take a picture of it, and try to identify it back home. There's a lot of great resources out there, whether it's a book or online, um, that can help you start to put together the picture of what birds these came from. For all feathers, things that I use to identify them are the size, the shape, and any coloration. So this one uh, is about three or four inches in length. It's mostly brown and tan, and notably it has this lighter edge on the leading, the leading edge of the feather. So it's cutting through the wind this way. It's got a light edge there, and on the trailing side, 
it also has this lighter tan color. All of those factors I'm going to put together to identify this as the feather of a robin. And odds are, if you are somewhere in North America where robins are common, any given feather you find on the ground might be from a robin just because the birds are simply so abundant that they are often um, the prey remains that we find. Hopefully you all learned something new that you can put to use next time you're out walking around in the woods. And if you want to dive deeper into figuring out what kinds of predators are in your area, make sure you check out the most recent video on how to identify cougar tracks.